Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, you know, I know it's the second day. We have about three more fireside chats. Um, I think this is the third time you'll have seen me if you've been uh, following all of them. Uh, John Lagman, I'm APAC FX and crypto workflow specialist and strategy lead. Uh, and today I, I have the honor of having Arisa Toyosaki, the CEO and co founder of Sega. So, uh, Arisa, uh, thanks. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe we can just kind of jump right into it. So maybe for uh, people who aren't familiar uh, with Sega, but they should, you know, could you provide us with maybe kind of intro and and give some like background information on Sega? Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you, John. And thanks to everyone who is listening in. My name is Arissa, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Sega. Sega is a DeFi structured investments protocol. So what that means is we actually create risk reward managed investment strategies using cryptocurrency assets. And our assets are some things like, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum, Solana, and a mixture of those gives you a good yield um, based on some of the options and future strategies that we combine. And the novel part is that we put everything on a smart contract. So all of the lifecycle management, including trading, execution, um, observations and settlements are done fully on chain. And that is the reason why we think um, like structured investments actually should go all on chain in the future. Um, it makes everything so much easier and so much cheaper. And so this idea came in 2021 when I wrote a white paper about it. And then since then we started building in 2022, we launched and today we've uh, done over $450 million in volume. We are uh, the number one DeFi option structure and investments provider. Um, and we're also the very first protocol in the world to have created exotic options on chain. Great. I mean, well, you mentioned that 2021, you wrote the white paper and then you, uh, you know, obviously founded the company. I mean, I was curious, like, what was kind of the the thought process behind the kind of creation? You know, was there some kind of seminal moment in your life that motivated you to 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 find uh, to found uh, uh, that made you you know founded uh, Sega Sega? Yeah, a seminal moment. Uh, sounds like a really <laughs> Sorry, I mean, if there was one, I'm saying. <laughs> but, um... maybe you came to an epiphany one day and said, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> so I started playing around with DeFi back in 2020 and, um, you know, back then, like Uniswap had just started really taking off. There were forks of AMMs everywhere, which means, um, you know, there were all these exchanges that were popping up. And, and what I realized is that there were these fundamental problems in DeFi. Um, specifically, I think the biggest problem was that there was a lack of innovation and a lack of real yields. Um, at the end of the day, the yields from AMMs are coming from supply and demand of uh, specific liquidity pools, and people would run to a new AMM that pops up because it had lower liquidity, higher yields, and there was just this, you know, some something like a Ponzi scheme going on with like all these new protocols that kept on forking each other and kept on um, uh, having these like crazy high, like three digit, four digit yields. And I, I think this was a huge problem that I saw that people were not really innovating. Um, and, and then there were also some more um, typical problems like lack of access. Um, I think with DeFi, you weren't able to access the more traditional products. You were only able to access these very new DeFi products. And then there was also a lack of risk management in the ecosystem overall where people were taking very risky bets on very low liquidity positions. And I'm not sure if a lot of them understood what kind of positions they were into. And so right now, even um, you know, three years later, four years later, we're seeing that the availability of products within the DeFi space is either very gambly, very high risk, or below money market returns. And so there's nothing in between. And so the the rationale behind building Sega was to build a product that had a real yield that was very familiar to people in the traditional work world, but is also really good. And then also something that had this good risk reward management. And so, yeah, that was kind of like a thought I had in 2020 and I put it uh, onto a document in 2021. Okay, great. I mean, um, you know, you talked about how, I guess, the challenge at the time, which is, as you said, it was either something very risky or below market return. Uh, you know, what kind of kind of challenges 
and also opportunities you kind of see, uh, you know, in the future for DeFi, um, you know, especially obviously in your case with regards to on-chain derivatives. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the challenges is always like, you know, how do we show the people who want like the 350% return that it's actually a really good return to have like 35% return, but more consistently and much less likely to lose all of your principal. And so that is, um, you know, I think very much um, something that will change over the course of the next year or so. Um, and, and it directly ties to the opportunity. So right now I see a couple of big trends in the market. Um, one is that the base capital market is growing. And so there is a higher volume of BTC ETH, um, which means that there will be a growth of option market that happens on the back of that. Um, you know, historically, uh, it took around 40 years from the New York Stock Exchange reformation to the CBOE creation. And I think uh, it took around eight years from the Bitcoin white paper to be published until Deribit, which was the first cryptocurrency options exchange to form. Um, it took around eight years. And so I think, you know, everything is following kind of Moore's law and it's taking one fifth of the time um, that it did in traditional markets, I think we're going to see a large uh, demand grow in option volume in DeFi as well. And so I think, um, and then obviously with the ETF approval, I see that there's more sophisticated players that are coming into the market. And I believe that the sophisticated players kind of understand sharp ratio, like risk reward management. And so with this base capital market growing in size with this Moore's law of um, everything happening much faster than what it did in traditional markets and with more sophisticated players coming in, um, I, I do see that on-chain derivatives is seeing a lot of in, um, is seeing a lot of interest right now, even if people are not users. And I think in the coming year or two, there's going to be a lot of users. And um, we think that you know it's gonna trickle down from spot market to the futures market, from the futures market to the options market. I'm curious then, do you see most of the growth for you probably coming from these newer, I guess, institutional players rather than maybe uh, the traditional kind of crypto natives that, as you said, looking for 350x, but trying to get them to understand that, well, you know, maybe something safer or more prudent, at least, would be to try uh, Sega? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And I think within the um, traditional group of users, as well as this new group of users, there's always going to be a range of sophistication. And actually, what I've seen is in this traditional group of users who uh, used to like the 350%, a lot of them, you know, have had a lot of trouble consistently making 350%. And some of these users have become a lot more sophisticated over the years, and are some of the Sega users today. Um, whereas I think, you know, within the sophisticated new users that are coming in, I think some people are looking for this high risk, high return type of um, projects, as well as those who kind of, um, you know, understand the value of the new technology and are interested in a more risk managed return. Um, I think there's a lot of options out there in the market today, but I think the type of products that we have um, are positioned for this coming uh, market movements. Okay. I mean, maybe if we kind of go a bit more, I guess, uh, focus on like say on chain derivatives and stuff. I mean, for, for again, those who would, you know, ideally after this start looking at on chain derivatives, you know, what, what, what uh, you know, what would you say is like the kind of value propositions maybe that Sega offers that, you know, kind of distinguish you from the rest of the, of the, your competitors in the DeFi space? Yeah, for sure. So first of all, uh, we are the first protocol in the world to have created exotic options on chain. And using exotic options, we're able to create a much more attractive risk reward for all of these structured investment strategies. We have an extremely simple user experience. So it takes around three clicks for you to stake your crypto into our strategies. Um, and, and I think one of the things that we've really distinguished ourselves in the market for is that um, we have one of the strongest options knowledge in-house. Um, so a lot of our team members do come from a traditional banking background. Um, we do the back test in-house. We also do pricings in-house and know what the right prices are. Um, so we don't take any in-house risk, but when we do um, do these trades, we actually understand um, you know, where the right levels are. Um, so we're always watching out for our users. We're always making sure that the value is correct. Um, and so we have a very 
stable product that is risk reward managed um, and a great team that is managing the product itself. Okay. I mean, you, you kind of highlighted the internal knowledge and all that. I mean, I'm sure, as you probably know, even with ChatFi clients, uh, exotic options can be quite, uh, uh, they think they know it until it blows up. But I was curious, like, uh, I mean, for, uh, I guess, for your clients, you know, how do you kind of, is there any kind of the educational process? I mean, that must take a lot of bit, a lot of time and stuff. You know, how do you uh, support, you know, users and making, say, informed decisions, you know, as even between your different products as into which ones they should, uh, you know, I guess, invest in? Yeah, for sure. And I think one of the greatest things about DeFi users is that they're very okay with learning things online. And so we have a variety of educational materials available. Um, well, at the launch of Sega, we had around um, five different levels of how to explain a Sega product, um, going from you know very picture focused, very easy um, to explain type of product to um, you know something that actually we had like mathematical equations that people could look in for. And I think um, the variety of how we explained it um, was definitely really important. Um, the second is also the available channels to communicate with one of our customer support representatives directly. Um, I think because we are online, um, you know, we have our website, we have our Twitter, we have our Discord channel, um, we have all these different avenues that people could um, ask directly about our product. Whereas I think in the traditional financial space, um, there's a lack of understanding because you only really get access to one person, which is your um, retail banking representative or your uh, prime uh, private banking uh, representative. And, um, you know, I think you have a very limited set of information because the product is also um, uniquely different across different banks. Um, I think you know all of this is democratized a little bit by putting it on chain and putting it on the internet uh, with the information widely available in many different forms. I, I was curious. I mean, is there a certain percentage you may know of that uh, where they became an investor that actually had to go through the education process uh, rather than they just kind of like you know, they'd heard about and just did it, I guess, or, or understood it. Maybe there's some chat by, but, you know, I was curious, you know, uh, and, and, and did you find there was a certain kind of, I don't know if the right word is gestation period, but if they did go through that process, was there a certain amount of time that, you know, I mean, I had, uh, my company, obviously there's always a sales process and we, we always want it quick, but, you know, sometimes some clients are a lot longer than others, depending on player type, I guess. Yes. We have definitely had users that, um, you know, we did outreaches for that um, took around a year to onboard. Um, we've also had users onboard immediately. It, it, there's really a range and there are some users that, um, you know, we're still trying to um, uh, educate about our products. And, you know, I, I think what's also great is that there's this culture of doing your own research, DYOR, um, in in the space. And some of the users who initially were a bit sluggish to onboard, um, you know, are now actually doing a lot of um, volatility trades, even in like the traditional mm -hmm. space, whereas previously they have done none. And so I think really uh, it's a case by case basis, but um, some users do uh, take um, you know, a lot of time to onboard. And I think it's good because these are the people that own a lot of on-chain capital. Um, yep. And eventually I think, you know, permeating these users will permeate the value of DeFi options across the market. Do, do you find that those type, uh, this last type actually are, are what we call stickier? Like, I mean, as long as you have the return they need, uh, you know, they, they're the kind of people that will stay, you know, keep rolling or whatever, uh, keep in the protocol. Yeah, so everything is on chain. We don't actually know exactly um, who is depositing where. Yep. Um, our products are quite sticky. Um, and I think that just shows to how sustainable like our returns are and also just the um, the types of users that ends up using our protocols. Yeah. So we've been kind of talking about like, uh, I guess more at a, at a higher level about your, you know, pro your product and stuff. Maybe again, for people that uh, who, who ideally would become more familiar, could you give maybe more insights and, you know, about your, you know, the different mm -hmm. product offerings and, you know, which ones tend to be more popular with if in general, if you want, or, or by segment types, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, right now on a high level, we have two types of products. We have the fixed coupon note, um, which is a note that gives you a daily yield. 
And then we also have the dual currency swap, which is a one-time yield. Um, and then you get it. Um, and if it passes a certain conversion point, you get swapped to a different currency. So one of our best-selling product right now is the combination of ETH Elephant and USDC Elephant, which is a dual currency swap that allows you to buy ETH low uh, using USDC and sell ETH high um, into USDC. And so a lot of users kind of switch back and forth between the strategy and um, they get into Ethereum at a good opportunity. Um, and even if they don't, they get their uh, yield in USDC around um, like 20% a year. And then they also go uh, and sell ETH when the market is high. Um, but if ETH does not go high, they still get a similar amount of yield in USDC. So um, that's a quite an attractive product. And then I think the other ones that are quite popular right now, there's the fixed coupon note called cruise control. Um, because crypto volatility is quite high, um, cruise control is actually a really interesting product where um, it, it's a product that has a, uh, a basket option. And you are when you're putting in your funds into cruise control, you're saying that in the next 27 days, you think neither BTC, ETH, or SOL um, Sorry, neither BTC or ETH would fall more than 90%. And um, if they don't go to get to 10% of where they are today, um, then you get something around like a 20% return. Um, so it's like a really interesting way to show kind of your market views on BTC and ETH. Um, and then another type of fixed coupon note that is quite popular, um, this is yielding around 30 to 40% um, annually right now is Gold Rush. Um, this gold rush product is actually a combination of Ethereum and gold, uh, so a um, traditional mm -hmm. asset. And you're basically um, betting that you know both uh, Ethereum and um, gold is not going to go down below a certain price um, for X amount of days. And then in return, you get around like a 30, 40% return. So um, these types of products are quite popular among users. I think the value of um, being diversified across crypto and a real world asset, um, maybe the value of um, having a directional view on BTC and Ethereum, um, or the value of also just uh, continuously trying to buy low and sell high between USDC and Ethereum. Um, these are like the three types of strategies that people are really into. Okay. I actually, uh, while I was listening to you, I was thinking of two things. One, maybe could be a quick one. I was curious, was there any backstory on Elephant as why you called it Elephant? I was just, I mean, I can get cruise control. Uh, Gold Rush makes sense. I was just curious was, yeah, if, if there was, or or if not, it's okay. Or if you want to make up one, that's fine too. I wouldn't know. <laughs> so all of our dual currency swap products have animal names, depending on oh, okay. if they're, uh, how, how aggressive they are. So we See. have the whales, the dragons, the elephants. Um, and then we're also going to be launching more um more animals down the line. Um, but elephant is actually our most uh, conservative strategy. So elephants oh. are stable and big and yes. Um, yes, it's a very conservative strategy. The strikes are further, um, whereas dragon is our more aggressive strategy and the strikes are closer, which means your uh, returns are higher, but your chance of conversion is also higher. Um, I'm a huge like RPG -er, so I was just curious, is there a certain color dragon, you know, because they have red dragons, gold dragons, or anything. I, I apologize, I haven't seen the picture. Is it what color is it? No, or so the colors also um, have a have a thematic thing. So oh, they do. Were you an RPG or two? <laughs> I I <laughs> was uh, only a Pokemon fan, but yes, okay. Yeah. okay. Having these like visual themes is also one of the things that I think really uh, improves the UX in DeFi. Yep. Um, we, we make it pretty easy to see. And then, um, yeah, if you go to app.sega.fi, you'll see all of the products with this like thematic, um, th uh, thematic chains. So definitely check it out. I definitely will. Okay. So, you know, I, I mean, you know, maybe looking back at the past year or so, you know, any kind of uh, insights or reflections, you know, uh, you know, on developments or trends and, you know, maybe you can even, I was actually, the other question I was thinking was, was there certain products you even tended to find uh, did were more popular with certain kind of uh, time periods or, or, or I guess, market trends? I guess that's a lot in one question, but yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So maybe I can go through some trends and then my yeah. thoughts on. So I, I think the some like uh, big DeFi trends that was happening in the last year or so, um, you know, a lot of restaking. Um, so there was like restaking and then there was restaking on restaking. Um, this, you know, I, I think this is very similar to like uh, the historical DeFi trends of um, building things that you can put things that um, you put in elsewhere. Um, I, I think that's definitely one of the trends. I think the second one is uh, real world assets. So I think there's a lot more protocols that are popping up that are trying to create um, either uh, backed assets. So um, protocols like backed out by, um, they put equities in like a traditional brokerage account and issue tokens on the back of that. Um, uh, protocols like Ondo Finance, they have U.S. Treasuries um, that are um, that that they put into a brokerage account and they issue tokens on the back of that. Um, I think these real world asset plays are starting to form and become more popular um, in in the market, even though the overall TBL is quite small. Um, I think another. Um, more like user behavior trends I've seen is like also the point system. So point yeah, system yeah. is when you're uh, racking up these like reward points on a protocol, um, which um, also has this implicit understanding that it's going to lead to an airdrop, um, which is when tokens come into your account. Um, and, and so, I, you know, what do I think of this? You know, I, I think history is just repeating itself again, where um, I think, you know, really great innovations have, um, you know, happened in DeFi in like the last three or four years, but I think the market is still quite nascent. And, um, you know, some of the schemes, I, I do wonder, like, I wonder if like the point system is going to be long lasting and healthy. Um, I wonder if all the multiple layers of restaking is going to cause any sort of like a cascading um, market error down the line. Um, but all in all, like, I believe that, you know, markets are um, self-managing and um, through mistakes they learn. I think the rate of security has become much higher in crypto um, and in DeFi overall. Um, I think the financial schemes that are happening in crypto um, have also become, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say safe, but they're becoming a lot, um, a, a lot less predatory. So in that way, um, I think we're definitely trending towards the right place um, with uh, definitely some caveats in, in mind. I see. I mean, you actually, you brought up a very key point, security. I mean, is that, I mean, maybe is that something, uh, I mean, how do you guys approach it? I mean, um, having been around for a bit and stuff and, uh, you know, no. Yeah, security is the top priority. I think in this market and in the um, past few years as well, um, if you're a DeFi protocol and you get hacked, it's over. Um, I don't think there's really a way to get out of it. Um, and so one of the uh, most important things we do is audits. Um, for every line of code that we ship, we get at least two or three auditors to make sure that no, there is no issue. Um, on top of it, uh, for Sega at least, we also care about um, having legal agreements. Um, and so sometimes uh, DeFi protocols are very much like code as law and only code. Um, for Sega, for any uh, large um, depositing, um, we actually also make sure that um, there is a legal agreement in place um, just so that um, everything is clear and there's like, um, there, there's no issues. Um, I think we are probably one of the um, top protocols in terms of how we consider security in this market. And we're constantly trying to build best practices. Um, and, you know, I think eventually everything is going to be on chain. And I think um, there's going to be a lot more trust on chain, but uh, we do want to, um, you know, take smaller steps um, towards that direction as we are still a growing um, market. Uh, are, are you a coder yourself? Uh, the reason I asked that I noticed on your telegram, you, I guess that picture of the young girl is you in front of, it looks like a computer or something like that. So, yeah. Yes, that is my, that that is a photo of me. And I realized that, um, yeah, I guess like 20 something years ago, um, I was in like all these computer camps with- Oh, wow, okay. With, with uh, elementary school boys. And now I am uh, doing the same thing with adult people. <laughs> okay, so you don't, well, you don't really have to grow up, right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay, so, um, oh, wow, interest of time. Um, so maybe we've been talking, you know, you've already kind of, you threw out a couple of like uh, potential issues and things like that. Um, you know, maybe for focusing on on your on Sega, you know, what kind of developments or innovations are you guys uh, expecting to kind of roll out or see regarding uh, on-chain derivatives and the broader DeFi space? 
Yeah, that, that's a really good question. And, you know, Sega has been running in the forefront of DeFi for many years now. And, you know, by many years, it's like three years. But <laughs> in this that, space, that's a long time, right? <laughs> yes, in this space, I think that makes us one of the more, most um, OG protocols. And I think, um, you know, right now, obviously, we're um, continuously experimenting with new structures and new exotic options. Um, but also, as kind of the market leader, we are looking into kind of expanding the horizon and seeing what kind of um, you know, broader DeFi space uh, we could target. And some of the things we're experimenting right now, and these are experiments, so, um, you know, I think they could uh, succeed or fail, but we're looking at making uh, B2B bespoke, stru uh, bespoke structures or like repurposing our product to enhance other parts of DeFi yields, um, such as lending. Um, I think there's a lot that you can do with like the lending and borrowing market in crypto. And then we're also just constantly trying to make the whole space better. So coming up with best practices on counterparty credit management um, or things like um, just like legal best practices, audit best practices. Um, these are things that I think are really, really important, not just for Sega, but for the ecosystem overall. How about like, uh, do, you, do you actually spend a lot of time, I'm not saying you don't, like with like maybe Mark, like, you know, because the way you market to people a year ago might differ. I mean, the whole kind of user experience and maybe, you know, how you approach or, or I guess uh, connect with your potential clients. Is that something you guys have to spend a lot of time realizing that what worked six months ago, which is again in this space a long time ago, uh, might not work with some newer entrants, I guess. Yeah. We try to get a pretty close pulse on the market um, constantly. So um, every quarter we do a market landscape report um, where we look at the differentiated user targets and also um, whether these insights have changed. Um, the really interesting thing about um, DeFi is that the user insights constantly change because the user demographic started from such a small um, number of people to now it's getting larger, but it's still considered pretty small um, when you look at, say, traditional uh, digital product space. And so um, the insights are constantly evolving and we try to build towards these insights while also trying to um, bring in new insights um, from outside the market to really um, expand the market overall and um, cater towards a new set of users. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, moving forward, like these experiments are meant to target these new groups of people coming in. And we're hoping that, um, yeah, that they're all going to be like very interesting experiments with very interesting learnings. Nice. Now, I think we only have 15 to 20 seconds. Any closing, sorry about that. Any closing mess? The, I think the next moderator is my colleague. So he'll like really get pissed off. If I'm, I'm we're too late. Anyways, any closing message you want to give the audience and for anyone, what is the best way to learn more about Sega? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'll be really quick. We'll be launching a new product really soon with full principal protection feature. Um, I think this is developed on the back of a lot of user interests and insights. Um, if you are interested in learning more about this product, uh, please follow us on Twitter. Our um, at is at Sega underscore Phi. Um, we also have a Discord, um, discord.gg slash Sega. And my Twitter is at Arisatoyo, A-R-I-S-A-T-O-Y-O. -O. Um, please feel free to DM me and happy to answer any questions there. Okay, great. No, uh, thanks. I mean, it, I think I learned quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I, I think thanks for everyone that's joined and please stay on and yeah, have a good evening. Yeah, thank you everyone. Have a great evening. Thanks, John.